with God's Word this morning. For the past couple of weeks, we've been talking about, after Easter, these post-resurrection appearances that Jesus made to his disciples both times, showing them the marks of his love. Those marks on his hands and his feet and in his side, proclaiming to them that he truly was this one that had been put to death for them. And then in Luke for this morning, Jesus reminds the disciples of what he had said before he died. And we're told that he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. He said, thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. He opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. Isn't that something? I've been thinking about this over this past week, and I, I wondered why Jesus didn't do this earlier. Why Jesus didn't open their minds to understand the scriptures and then explain it to them before he died. In our scheme of things, that would seem to make good sense. It would have been easier for them to believe in him, easier for them to follow Jesus, easier for them to get a grip on this wonderful news of his resurrection, if he'd maybe opened a little bit more of what was to happen before it had happened. It seems to us that everything could have gone so much more smoothly during these days of Jesus' ministry if his disciples had just understood the scriptures. But they didn't understand. And instead, all through the Gospels, we see the disciples bumbling and stumbling along. And we see Jesus dressing them down and teaching them over and over again what the right way is. So, why did Jesus wait so long to open their minds to understand the scriptures? To open their minds to understand him? Well, I believe the disciples had to come to grips first of all, with the reality of Jesus' death and resurrection before they could really understand what the Scripture had to say about those things. Their hearts and their minds could not be open. They couldn't possibly understand until they were prepared for it by everything that they had seen and heard and felt with Jesus. It reminds me of a story about an explorer back in the 19th century who had just returned home after an exploratory voyage to the Amazon River in South America. He was part of the team that had uh, discovered or come upon that, that vast body of water. And of course, as you would expect, his friends and his neighbors were waiting for him to come home and anxious to learn all about this mighty river and all the country surrounding it. And on his way home, he wondered how he could even begin to describe this magnificent new sight to them. How could he put into words what he felt and what he experienced when he saw the exotic flowers and heard the sounds of the jungle at night cruising along the Amazon? How could he begin to share the smells that filled the air or that sense of danger and excitement that would come whenever he and his explorers crossed paths with dangerous and strange animals that they'd never seen before or as they took their canoes through the dangerous rapids of the Amazon? So he made a decision. He did what all good explorers do. He said to the people who waited for him at this lavish reception, he said, I think you should go and find out for yourselves what it's like. And so he drew up a map, made a map of the Amazon River showing all of its twists and turns, writing the script along the side, talking about the dangers and some of the routes that could be used to get around those dangers as they traveled along the Amazon River. And folks were impressed with that map, and they took it, and they framed it, and they hung it on the wall in the local museum so that everybody could look at it. They even made copies and made those copies available in the gift store, and for an additional charge, you could get that map framed. <laughs> and after a while, many of those who made copies for themselves and studied that map at home in their spare time considered themselves experts on the river. They could tell you every twist and turn that that river took. They could tell you when the river narrowed and when it got wide again. They could tell you where each one of those dangerous rapids could be found. They knew the river. And they were glad to share their knowledge. 
that they've attained if ever anyone had a question about what the river was like. But they've never been there. I think that speaks to the relationship that sometimes we have with Scripture today. We might know all the facts, but somehow we haven't absorbed the words. We might know the Scriptures, but sometimes I don't think we understand them like we should. And we don't understand them because we haven't gotten personal with those words, and we haven't let the words behind, the experience behind those words link up with the truth that we find in Scripture. There might be parts of Scripture that are near and dear to our hearts. And if someone really presses us, we can admit that there are some parts that we just don't understand or we kind of page through quickly to get beyond them. We haven't discovered yet that all of Scripture, when we weave it all together with this, with this uh, stories here and there, provide, provide us with a story of God's plan and God's desire, in the end, to save all of creation. And if we're honest, we have to admit that a lot of us are like the disciples before Easter Sunday. We back away from a lot of what Jesus tells us to do. We don't want to hear about carrying others' burdens. We don't want to be having to think too much about the suffering that is required to truly love somebody. We tend to tune out the challenge about giving up family and home for the sake of the gospel. And we chafe when we think about how good people, people like Jesus, sometimes have to die before they can really live. We have a hard time seeing how that kind of material <clears throat> can be considered to be good news. The disciples didn't think it was good news. And we can't see how or why it might be important for us either. And so just like Jesus' first followers, We'd rather hear about the glory given to the faithful. We'd like to hear about how the righteous will be given power. We want to hear about how the humble will be given the earth and how the poor in spirit will be given the kingdom of heaven. But we can't just pick and choose which scripture we want to hear and which scripture we want to listen to. We can't have the earth unless we carry the burdens of others. We can't have the kingdom of heaven without being willing to put God first. We can't have power without being willing to suffer. And we can't have glory without being willing to die. That's what the scripture says. Do we understand it? Until we understand that, until we see the links between who we are now and what God can make of us, between what we experience now and what we will experience later, until we see the links between the death and resurrection of Jesus and our own lives, these scriptures are like a closed book to us. And that's why Jesus did not open the minds of the disciples so that they could understand the scriptures before his resurrection. Until Jesus rose, the disciples did not have the experience they needed in order to have open minds. Until after the resurrection, the connection between the death and resurrection of Jesus was an unpleasant thought that they didn't want to have to deal with. They could see no glory in the cross. It's the death and life and resurrection of Jesus that make our life experience being brought into step with the message of the scriptures. Jesus provides a link that can open our minds so that we can understand them and then understand our own lives in light of those words in Scripture. We take comfort in the fact that on that first Easter Sunday, Jesus opened the minds of his disciples so that they could understand. He reminded them of their times together. He reminded them about what they experienced with him. And he pointed to the Scriptures that talked about those experiences. He began to make those connections so that they could understand. He said, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the Law of Moses and the Prophets and the Psalms. That Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations. So, you want to understand the scriptures? Well, then you need to know both Jesus' death and resurrection. In our 
our faith about him, what's in our heads, and our faith with him inside of our lives, that's what's in our hearts. God is always about the business of transforming us day by day, changing us into the people we were created to be. That's what the message of Scripture is all about. In 1 John, we read this, We are now children of God. What we will be has not yet been made known, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. You see, Jesus waited before he opened the minds of his disciples because the story of his ministry was not complete until the resurrection had taken place. The disciples just wouldn't have been able to understand the scriptures until they witnessed the fact that he had risen from the dead. <coughs> and we're just like those first disciples. We can't understand the scriptures until our minds have been opened by our experience with him and by our faith in his resurrection. If we don't believe in Jesus and the fact that he died and rose again for us, then we're a lot like those people who simply spent their time studying the map of the Amazon River. We can know a lot about him, but we can never understand him or experience the plans he has for us. But through our belief in him, even if we can't read a word of scripture, we can understand what God has said in those words. I read a story about a new Christian who was asked about Jesus by one of his friends who didn't know Jesus. And his friend said to him, I hear you become a Christian. And the convert said, yes, that's right. Well, then you must know a lot about Christ, said his friend. Tell me, what country was he born in? The man said, I don't know. Well, how many sermons did he preach? How old was he when he died? Again, the man said, I don't know. Well, tell me how he was born, how he did his miracles, or how he was raised from the dead, asked his friend. And the convert again said, I don't know. Well, his friend, if you could call him that, said, you certainly don't know too much for a man who claims to be a Christian. And his response was this. He said, you know, you're right. I'm ashamed about how little I know, but this I do know. Three years ago, I was a drunk. I was in debt, and my family life was falling to pieces. My wife and children would dread my coming home every night. I was desperate. I gave my heart to God. Now I don't drink. We're out of debt, and my wife and I are in love again. Christ has done this for me, and that much I do know. We can know the biography of Jesus that's found in all the scriptures. We can explore the laws that are written down there. We can debate endlessly why this or that happened. And we can gather all kinds of knowledge about scripture. But none of, us, none of it will give us the understanding that God wants us to have. If you want to understand what the scriptures are all about, then let Jesus open your mind every time you open the book. Because it's Jesus that these words of scripture point to. And it's Jesus that we're called to trust. Then like that explorer of the Amazon, like the clay in the hands of the potter that these scriptures talk about, like the new Christian whose life was changed, we will truly understand, like the disciples then did. And we'll praise God for the new life that God has given to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, we've been called together by your Spirit. We've been made whole by the love that you give to us in his name. So lift us up. Give us new life. As you breathe new life into creation, breathe new life into us. As we seek to walk where you call us to go. And love as you call us to do in Jesus' name. Amen.